Hello, this is Mike at Game for Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Hacks and Hacks Flixel tutorial series. Today we're going to jump into the coding process. And as is the norm when doing a first tutorial, we're going to start things off with a hello world. Now this entire series assumes you've seen the prior parts or already know what was covered. So I'm guessing you went through the previous tutorial that got your Hacks development environment up and running. And in this particular case, I'm going to be using Visual Studio, which, uh, Visual Studio Code, which I also showed you how to configure in a previous tutorial. So I'm assuming you're at that point. And at the very end of that first configuration tutorial, I showed you how to use the Flixel command to create a new project. And we're going to start off right there. And once again, it was a matter of just typing the command Flixel. And then we want to create a new one. Oh, so TPL, new, and we're going to call, call it Hello World. And this is going to create the project for us. We went ahead and created it. This is automatically going to fire up in Visual Studio Code too, just because of the way I have things configured. So here we are. Welcome to our very first ever project. You'll see down here, it's created a number of files for us. It's created this folder called Assets with a bunch of pretty much empty files in there. The only one that's actually got anything in it is Images. Nope, doesn't even have one in there. I thought it created a default image. So uh, quite literally, it's just created this structure for us to put our assets in. You don't have to use it, but there are advantages to doing so as we will see down the road. Uh, so in addition to this asset folder, it created the export folder, which is where uh, the targets are gonna be built. Your, so that your end compiled results are gonna end up in export. And then finally source, probably the most important one source is where our game source code comes from. And it went ahead and it created uh, four different files for us. Now one of them we're gonna ignore completely for now, assetpass.hx. Uh, let's pretend that doesn't exist because we're gonna talk about it a little bit down the road. It also created a folder, a file for us called menustate.hx. Now what it's allowing you to do here is basically it's trying to structure your project a bit like what you would want. And states we are going to talk about, but what it's done is created two states for us and we actually only need one. So let's just take menu state and we're just gonna outright delete that. Simplify this first example down as much as possible. So what we've got here is our main and our play state. Now, another key file you may have seen right here was also project.xml. Now, project.xml is an XML file, exactly what you think it is. And it's got some uh, top level configurations that the compiler is going to use for us when building our project. And it's telling it things like um, what to use as a preloader, uh, the name of the application, the title of the application, the version of the application, and most importantly, the entry point of the application. You can also see down here, it's got some default settings for resolution. And these are conditional based off platform. So you can see there's this if HTML5, if desktop, if mobile. And you know some of these things are obviously not gonna be applicable. So for example, what it's gonna do here is by default, we're gonna create a 640 by 480 pixel window running at 60 frames per second. But when you're running on mobile, you're full screen. So this resolution means absolutely nothing. So you see here, there's a conditional for the window settings if you're on mobile devices, instead just run it as full screen. So this is a way of configuring different settings for different platforms. Um, all in one place so your code doesn't you know turn into a mess of ifs this also has all your various uh, dependencies so it says here that we're dependent on the library flixel um, for the most part we're not going to have to do anything in here but i do want you to be aware of this i also want you to know if you want to run at a different resolution so you want to be 320 by 200 you just change that right here uh, so that is what project.xml does for us but what we're mainly mainly interested in for this particular example is main.hx now, one thing that we've got, we got here, this is the entry point for our application. Uh, just like if you've done C++ programming or C programming or Java programming or C sharp program, your program starts at main. In this particular case, your program starts wherever the hell you tell it to start. And in this case, you told it to start at main. So this is when your program starts, when someone double clicks your program, the very first line of code that is going to run is this constructor and this line of code. And this basically just says, okay, for the parent class, call its constructor, do all the stuff you need to do for setup. And then what we're going to do is add a child uh, and we're creating in, in what we're, the parameter we're passing here is, is a new Flixel game, FLX game. Now, FLX game is very important, but very unimportant. It's kind of a weird thing that way and I'll explain why now behind the scenes it is your game object so this is the thing that's responsible for doing things like um, polling for input updating the game loop now game loop is a simple concept basically it's run over and over and over again and it does things like say 
update this, uh, draw this, now update this, now draw this, now update this, now draw this, and it does that over and over and over again. So say it's running at 60 frames per second, that loop will run 60 times. So everything in it will be told to update and to be told to draw, etc. That is all handled by Flixel Game, but you don't generally work with Flixel Game directly. Instead, what you do is you create a state and pass it to the Flixel Game. So that's what we've done here. We basically said, create a new Flixel Game, and you can set uh, the width and height can be defined here. We don't have to because we defined it in project.xml by default. But if you wanted to, you could override the width and height here. And then what play state to run when the game is finally created. So this behind the scenes is going to set up a bunch of stuff for us. It'll going to initialize the game engine. It's going to set up the game loop. It's going to start things running. Uh, but then it's going to go ahead and create its first state. Now you notice right here that our main class is extended from Sprite. And this probably doesn't make a lot of sense. And you know what, I fully agree. It doesn't make any sense that the base class for a game is Sprite or for the, your game object is a Sprite. Um, and we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to ignore the use of Sprite there because it actually makes things a little bit more confusing. Just do be aware that this is how things were done in the Flash world. Uh, kind of sprite was your base class object in the the flash development world so they kind of inherited that over so this doesn't make a whole lot of sense initially but do do realize there is some history behind why and for the most part you just need to know you need an entry point it's defined in project.xml by default it will be named main and this is where your code starts and all you need to do to start things off is to create this flixel game object and add it to add child and this will fire off the whole mechanism but what's going to happen is it's going to create things behind the scene and once it's done creating things it's going to create play state and that is your other class right here and this is essentially a state is a way of organizing code into chunks. A state is really a simple thing. It's a collection of game objects. So you've got, you know, we're gonna we're gonna create a text object in a moment where you can have dozens and dozens or hundreds or hundreds or thousands and thousands of objects that the state contains. And generally you can think of a state, depends on how you want to structure your game, but a very common way to think of states is in terms of say screens. So you could break your game logic up into, you know, uh, title screen, uh, playing the game screen, game over leaderboard screen, and credit screen. And so those would be the states that your game was in. Or hell, your game may not make sense to have more than one state. And so what you have is this. You have one single state called play state or whatever you want to call it. And that is where your game logic is. Now, the important thing here, though, is that game loop I was talking about. It's going to be called over and over and over again. And part of that is it's going to call you and say update. So since we last uh, called you, what changed? Make things update. And we're gonna look at using that in a second. So basically you think of breaking your game down into manageable chunks. Those chunks are called states. Now a state is the FLX state object. And for the most part, it's just a container of stuff that has a callback function for being called from the game loop. Um, and there's more to it. So there's there's code there for transi uh, transitioning between states, etc. We'll look at that later on. But just think of states as being breaking your game down into manageable logical chunks. Now that we've got our state talking here, we're gonna go ahead and just create that hello world. So we're gonna create the text display up on screen. So we're gonna to have to do a little bit of coding here. We're gonna to have to add some uh, text into these at the top. So actually we need state, we need text, and we need color. So it's using a bunch of imports we don't actually need. Now the neat thing you'll notice is if we actually click on um, one of these lightning bulbs, we can say remove all unused and Visual Studio Code will get rid of it for us. Uh, but all right. So get rid of all of those things and we're also going to import flexol.util.flexcolor. Okay, save that. They're squiggly underlined because we haven't actually used them yet. So you see, as we actually use something from those imports, uh, that squiggle will go away. So first thing we're gonna do is create a variable called text and it's of type flixel text. So you'll notice we just used flixel text and it's gonna chill out eventually for doing, I oh, actually haven't used it yet, we've just declared it. Um, so here we've got it. This is the create that's called um, by the game loop when our state is ready to be created. First thing we do is call back to our parent, so um, to FLX state and let it set itself up first. And now we're gonna do our initialization. So this is gonna be very early on. This is before the game loop even starts. So this is where you set things up. And what we're going to do now is create text equals new. So we're just going to declare it. So flx text, a couple parameters here. So our location, we're going to start at 0 and 0. And now we're going to use a 
something you should be aware of. Now, FLXG is, think of it as Flixel Global. This is where a bunch of things are stored for us. Utility functions, handy functions, even actually that game we created earlier, that game object is actually available in uh, Flixel G. So it, it's this global kind of variable place. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that's very handy to be um, stored up in there. And specifically at this time, uh, one of the values stored up there is the width of the screen. So we're just gonna pass in uh, for, uh, so basically we're creating text that takes up the full width of our, um, our on-screen uh, option. So that's what FLXG is used. We're gonna use that guy quite a bit across this entire tutorial. Uh, our text of course is hello world because of course it is. Like so, and next up we tell it how big to create it. So 64 point font. So that's the initializer. Next we're gonna actually go ahead and set format on that guy. Uh, we're gonna use, so we're passing in null for the font. That means it's gonna use its built-in font. Uh, you could pass in a, a true type font if you want. We'll probably look at fonts a little bit more in detail down the road. But for now, we're just gonna use the built-in font available. Uh, once again, we're making a 64 point font. And all I'm doing right here actually is I wanna set the color. So Flixel color, red. So you see there's a bunch of, uh, it's just a whole bunch of built-in standard colors available for us. And you see all the different options. So black, blue, cyan, gray, green, etc. Just red. And next we're gonna do Flixel text align, like so. And we want it to be centered. So we just formatted it. So first thing is we created our text. Uh, we set it to a hello world 64 point font. And then we uh, formatted it further to basically say we want this text to be read and we want this text to be centered. Uh, now finally, very, very, very important. We are adding the text. Now when I told you earlier that this Flixel state is a container. It contains all the various different game objects that your game needs or your game screen or your game mode, whatever the heck you decide to use Flixel states to represent. Well, a Flixel state contains all of the objects in your world and you just simply add them to the container by calling add. So it's a built-in function of this Flixel state, which it actually is inheriting from a child object that it in turn inherits from. But this adding to yourself part is very fundamental. Things that you add will automatically be updated and drawn by default when they're passed through the game loop. So the game loop is gonna call and say, okay, whatever your active state is, so in this case, play state, every loop, every pass through the game loop, every time the game engine updates itself, it's gonna call update on that play state. Now that play state, or our state here, is then in turn going to call update on all of its children, which is what we've basically done. We've basically just said, create a new object of type uh, FLX text and add it to the container uh, in our FLX state. So think of states basically as containers of stuff to be updated. And really that's about it. So our text has now been added. Uh, our code should in theory work. If you're using Visual Studio Code, you should be able to do uh, Control Shift B or Command Shift B depending on your platform and then find out the type you just made. Okay, so that's why I wasn't getting it. So import flixel.flxg. All right, now let's go ahead and run it. All right. So our code ran, so I don't know why we've got a squiggly going on there. So our code is running. There you can see our hello world. Let me just exit that and we'll save here. So we got a warning, you can see the output here, unused inbound. Okay, so we got a non-warning. So to run that, control shift B, if you don't have any errors, you shouldn't see. All right, are you just not updating? All right, there we go. And there is our end result. Now, one thing to do be aware of is if you do run Flash as your platform of choice right off the hop and you don't have a Flash player installed, um, it's not gonna work. So if you don't wanna install anything else, instead of using the Flash target, use um, the CPP or the Nico target. Uh, otherwise, you need to install a standalone or browser-based Flash player. So I've actually gone to the Flash website, downloaded a standalone player. It's available in the link um, of this version of this tutorial down below. So if you wanna actually run in the Flash player, you do need to install the standalone Flash player. Uh, but as you can see here, we have our 64 point um, hello world in the default font uh, at zero, zero coordinate uh, center. 
And that's exactly what we were setting out to do. Now let me do one last thing before we move on. And let's show that update in action. So instead of running this, let's shut that guy down. So you see, here is that update function. And once again, every pass through the game loop, this is going to be called. And all we're gonna do here, so we'll call up to our parent implementation so that it runs its own update first. And then text.y plus plus. So every run through, every frame update, we're just gonna move down the screen by one pixel. And then finally, if text.y is greater than, and then flxg again, uh, height. So that's the height of your window. So basically we're saying if uh, the y coordinate or the y position, a uh, part of the x and y location of a sprite object, um, if the y position of our text is off screen currently, we're gonna reset it back to zero, minus 64, because 64 is the uh, total height of it. So we're gonna want it to scroll in off the screen. So text.y equals zero minus 64. And of course you could just say minus 64, but this makes more sense to me. And that's it. So this is key thing here is to understand that this update call is going to be called on Flixel state every single frame. And it's responsible for updating, you know, the things in that particular role. And go ahead and run that. And there you go. So you see now the text scrolls down off the screen and down and then scrolls back in off the top. And that's about it. Now, this is uh, almost like a, a, a sprite. We're gonna cover that a little bit more in the next tutorial. We're actually gonna get into um, you know slightly more advanced drawing on screen. We're gonna create a graphic uh, programmatically. We're gonna also load one from file, just an image, and then draw it on screen. And you can see there's a very common procedure going on here. Uh, the container aspect, this Flixel state containing other objects thing. You're gonna see it works the same for text as it does for images, as it does for graphics. And that's what we're gonna cover in the next tutorial. Uh, that's it for today. This is the Hello World example, your seminal uh, welcome to programming. And as you can see, the code is pretty straightforward, pretty clean. There's not a whole lot involved. And once again, the text of all this code is available in the link down below. Uh, so if you get a syntax error or something comes up, uh, do be sure to check that out. You can probably get the details there. And if these squiggly lines really do irritate you, um, you can just click the lightning bulb and say, remove, get rid of all of the unneeded ones, and it will. Uh, so quick, 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 quick recall of exactly what we covered here. Uh, main is the entry point for your application, and inside of that, what we do is basically add a child to it. The child is a new game object. The game is an implementation or uh, an instance of Flixel game. It's a class you don't use yourself, but it is responsible. It is the heart of your application. And most importantly, it is the thing that has the main loop. Now, the key thing that you need to do, though, is provide a default state for that guy to run with. This state is a container or a collection of game objects that all get updated. Um, and in this case, we just created a simple text one, we formatted it, and we added it to ourself. So we added it to our game object collection, and then it's just gonna be visible, it's gonna draw itself automatically and everything else. And then as you saw, we can also override our update behavior. So when we pass through that game loop, when Flixel FLX game um, you know, does its next iteration through the game loop, it calls the update function on whatever the active state is, which in this case, is the only state available, play state. And then during this update, uh, we just moved the text off the screen. But this is where you would put your other logic in. Now, one thing that we didn't really talk on here is if we created our own class called, um, like inherited from Flixel text, we could have also overrode the update there as well. And that update would automatically be called as well. So that's how you kind of break the logic between the different application pieces and make your game into a more manageable chunk. As I said, next step, we're gonna get a little bit more involved in graphics. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, please do let me know down below. Hopefully you liked that. If you did, please do click that like button. And if you're interested in more, learning more about uh, Hacks Flixel, we are just getting started. So uh, do hit that subscribe button. All right, see y'all later. Goodbye.